Two words to describe Constance Rhodes are beautiful and embracing. Constance has an inner beauty you will connect with almost instantly. Her intentionality of truly knowing the heart of everyone she connects with is a quality I definitely admire. She embraces others by sharing in a real, vulnerable, authentic way so that others will embrace who they are and share in the same way. You're gonna love our conversation. Here we go. Constance Rhodes, here's your first question. What inspires you? So I'm really inspired by new ideas. Mm. So it can even be other people's new ideas. I just love to think of something new yeah. that hasn't been done or right. it could be done better. Maybe that's why we're friends. Yeah. That's why you listen that so well. Entrepreneur. Yeah, and... you do. You like like to listen to where we're going and the vision of it. And then we both are like, okay, how do we make this happen? Yes. I'm an activator. I'm like, okay. What are the steps we need to take mm -hmm. to get to that vision? Right. It's fun, isn't it? It really is. Like, yeah. it makes me feel alive. Right. I'll be like, oh, this is so exciting, you know? And <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Take me back to one of the first things that you really had a vision for and then you actually carried, it, carried out in your life. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess... The first thing that comes to mind is something that I just spent the last 20 years doing, so it's very still top of mind. And it's it's the short story is I had battled an eating disorder when I was mm -hmm. growing up, and as God was bringing me toward healing, He literally did give me a vision, not something weird and woo woo, but I just right. really had a vision yeah. of helping people in that area, and then over the period of almost 20 years, I got to do that in a whole bunch of different ways. So that's the first thing that yeah. comes to mind. Tell me, how did you, how did you come to decide that's what you wanted to do? You know, I was at the time when, when I first kind of had this idea or vision, I was in Bible college in Dallas and I was in the school singing group and we were traveling to Europe. I was battling food issues really, really bad. Um, but I remember being on that tour and we would pray for people after the concerts and I remember being in Germany so there was a language barrier we would speak through translators after our concerts people would come up and we'd pray for them and I remember being surprised that I was battling really really badly an eating disorder mm -hmm. and women who would come up for prayer that wasn't something I was talking about would be expressing eating disorder. And this uh, was quite some time ago. Yeah. So that was not a common topic. And I remember this one night in Germany, literally kind of just waking up in the middle of the night. And I envisioned myself standing on a stage, talking to a whole large group of people about this issue. And I was only 19 and I was obviously very stuck in my issue at the time. But I remember writing in my journal and I really thought I was going to jump off the bus at the end of the summer and start a ministry. Um, there's obviously a lot that transpired in a yeah. whole 10 years between that vision and when I started it. But that's when that particular vision was birthed in my heart. That's good. So you found freedom from your eating disorder and you wrote a book. Yeah. Um, tell me about how that all came to be as well. Yeah. Well, going back just a little bit, my introduction to disordered eating was my mom. And she had a very conspicuous eating disorder. And growing up, I remember just watching her behaviors with food, which were very alarming and um, not understanding why. Yeah. And then I remember going to Bible college, never having had food issues. And maybe some of your viewers can relate to just being in a foreign place, you know, and kind of insecure. And I began to turn to food. I began to eat a lot. I put weight on pretty fast and that just began to rock this issue in my yeah. own life. So that continued through Bible college. And like I said, I had this sense, and, and maybe you can relate, some of your viewers can maybe relate. I had this sense that this area of great pain was also an area I wanted to help right. others in, right. you know? 
And, uh, but it just kind of continued for some time. I ended up working in the Christian music industry, which is a very appearance oriented yeah. kind of thing. And God began to just deal with me in this area. Yeah. And the more that he did, the more I realized that this was pretty life controlling for me. Yeah. And it was as I began to allow him to, um, get to this really hidden part of who I was at the time that, that, that initial vision from 19 began to sort of resurface. Yeah. And I just realized I want to, it's like the incentive of helping others became my incentive to get better. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if somebody wants to get help, where would you send them to? Yeah. So I, through my years of working in that area started a nonprofit called Finding Balance and it's still going today. I'm I'm so excited to see how God is carrying that on with a new generation of leaders and um small group tools, prayer groups, all kinds of different resources are there. That's findingbalance.com is where you can find all that stuff. And then even through our relationship with you, like I've gotten to meet you and uh, some of the folks you work with who are now looking at ways where finding balance can incorporate into some of the coaching materials. Yeah. You know, there's just so many great resources coming out yeah. on the topic. I want to ask you one more question on eating disorders. I want you to just speak to what was your experience watching your mother struggle through that? Yeah. So when I was younger, her struggle was very volatile. So she had bulimia and that particular eating disorder, she would eat enormous amounts of food. And then we would hear her go into the bathroom and we'd hear the faucets turn on and we knew that she was, you know, getting rid of that food. Um, And it was, there's different types of food issues and a lot of people swing uh, from different extremes. Um, In her extreme, in that area, then it just created a lot of anxiety in her, a lot of stress in the home. Yeah. It actually was an issue that I believe she wrestled with until um, she passed on. And she passed on at a young age. She was 50, she's the age I am right now, 50 wow. years old. And she didn't pass on exactly from the eating disorder. She'd had a car accident about four and a half years earlier. But her part of what led to her passing was that her internal systems had been ruined through that eating disorder. And so for her, even though she later went on and got her PhD and she was counseling others, she still kind of had that thing on her back, I think all the way until the point of her accident. And ultimately I think it contributed to her early death. Yeah, wow. At Women of Faith, we not only care about your spiritual health, we care about your physical health too. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and that we are to be obedient to Him by taking care of the body God gave us. Our new sponsor, Faithfully Fit and Free, shares this belief and they're driven by a passion for helping people achieve a healthy body, a healthy spirit, and a healthy mind. You can visit faithfullyfitandfree.com to discover products that give you more energy and support your immunity, along with superfoods, personal care, and more. I personally love their mission and their products because I feel incredible taking them, and I know you'll love them too. Plus, when you place your first SmartShip order, you'll receive a free devotional. Check out faithfullyfitandfree.com, where the focus is on a healthy body, a healthy spirit, and a healthy mind. When life gets hard, it helps to know you're not alone. If you or someone you care about is battling anxiety or depression or loneliness, our comprehensive collection of classes and resources cover more than 100 topics like these. All of our classes are based on biblical truth, giving you hope beyond what the world has to offer. Sign up to watch the Women of Faith collection of classes at Liftable TV and start moving toward the freedom you crave. We envision a world transformed by women living victoriously with Him. 
we prepare our kids to be able to speak up what they for what they believe in. God wants to provide for us all the wisdom and the knowledge that we need. He wants you to have a group of friends. He wants you to feel like you belong. He wants you to be in community because we're made for a relationship. Watch over 80 diverse Christian programs, including the Women of Faith show and classes on Liftable. I know that worry is a topic that you are passionate about talking about. So I can only imagine that worrying about your mom was a huge part of your upbringing. You know, not necessarily. (laughs) Um, The worry that I have wrestled with the most, which I think was triggered by her, she, she ultimately left our home when I was just 10, I think. The worry that I have battled is the worry of being abandoned. Mm. And so the way that that has played out for me is in relationships and in you know, a lifetime of trying to manage what people think of me so that they won't leave me. And yeah. I think that did, I, I think really the, the root of that for me was what was going on with her, but it was just in a different way. Yeah. Um, I did worry about her some with yeah. the food issues, but the worry that I continue to sort of uh, keep before the Lord is when I find myself in that place of feeling like I'm going to be abandoned or someone's going yeah. to no longer want me around because I'm not being a particular way, looking a particular way or doing a particular thing. Yeah. How have you dealt with that? How do you think you've overcome some of that? Yeah. So for me, a huge component, part of it is that, I don't know, for me, you know, I am a little older than I was. I'm older than you. And um, <laughs> I will say that there is something that comes with age for me, the older I've gotten to be able to recognize, first of all, that all of us as women in particular, I know this from working with women for so long now, that all of us carry that same fear of being left behind, not included, left out, abandoned, if you will. And so I think knowing that and knowing that I'm not the only one that feels that way, that is something I've been able to learn through the years of work I've done. Also knowing that ultimately there will be people who do leave, And there will be people who I leave and that that is part of the human experience and being able to trust God. I say, trust God with my friends list. You and I were talking about this earlier today and just recognizing that not everyone will like me and that is okay. And that if I spend my life trying to um, make people like me or worrying a lot if they don't, that there is a lot of noise happening up here that's going to keep me from doing things yeah. that are really more meaningful with my life. Yeah. It's interesting because I think a lot of times when people hear the word abandonment, they think literally the person walking out of your life or the baby left on the doorstep of the fire right. department, right? And that's yeah. not necessary. I mean, people experience abandonment because somebody else isn't emotionally available to them. That's, that's right. abandonment. They're like, what am I supposed to do? You have abandoned me emotionally. That's right. Not even necessarily physically. Yeah, it's almost worse, they say, that if you are with people but you feel yeah. emotional abandonment yeah. hurts more. Yeah. than if they just weren't there at all because right. you have this illusion of connection, yeah. but it doesn't feel secure. And I think right now um, it has, there's this sense of isolation or loneliness like never before. So we're, we want to connect with people like God made us to Mm -hmm. connect with other people, Mm -hmm. right? And yet sometimes it's like we don't even know how to connect. I, you know, I've had these feelings in my life where I'm trying to connect with somebody. I'm trying to have a real deep conversation. Real relationships is a huge value of mine. I want to like really know the person. And we end up talking about the weather or their kid's (laughs) baseball game. And I'm like, it doesn't, it's not a fulfilling thought for me. It's not a fulfilling relationship. And it's like my deepest desire to have that real relationship to truly be known Mm -hmm. and to truly know the other person. I know that's one of the reasons I think we've really connected. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we have a passion for that fulfillment in our life. And it really comes back to that abandonment. That's the starting point. Yeah, I think 
so I think a couple of things. One is I think, even though I cannot relate to this and maybe you can't either, there are actually people who are okay with, who get their needs met with those more shallow conversations. I am not one of those people. I don't think you're one of those right. people. We're always going to look for what is deeper because when we can go deeper, we feel then that, like you just said, yeah. to know and be known. Yeah. So sometimes I have to remember that just because someone's being shallow with me, um, sometimes it's because they're hiding. For and sure. I would say, I would think most of the time there's some hiding going on in that. And then sometimes there's just people who are totally okay with that. Sure. They're just not the people that I'm going to be the most drawn to. Yeah. And then the other piece of that, I think, is being able to venture out there and share pieces of ourselves and be okay with somebody not being able to reciprocate that yeah. or to understand that and yeah. being secure enough within ourselves to accept that if we are too much or not enough, yeah. which by the way, we usually swing back and forth, right? On that, too much, not enough, too much, not enough. It's, I just think of the times like sometimes I'm like, I said way too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, can, I'm gonna say something interesting about too much and not enough, because I wrote on this one time. I, I was at a dinner with a publisher, and at the dinner, I was, I was being like the fullness of my, you know, self. The with full all the ideas, Constance Rhodes. The full Constance Rhodes. <laughs> And I was feeling really good about it until like somebody at the table, I felt like gave me the side eye or something like that. Yeah. And I remember getting in the car and suddenly I felt this overwhelming shame mm. that I had been too much. And I was wrestling with it all the drive home in Nashville. And I was like, in an odd way, when we feel like we're too much, yeah. I think this is true. I think this bears out. It's because actually on some level, we believe we're not enough. Because if I really am enough and somebody says, you are enough and we love you and no matter what, you're enough. And then I'm like that full version of myself that sometimes might annoy people. <laughs> I go back to feeling secure. Yeah. But if I feel like I'm only enough if I'm obeying all the rules of whatever yeah. they think is enough, then naturally when I cross what I think is the line, which they may not have even thought was the line, then immediately there's that, oh, I was too much. Yeah. And so I feel like as women in particular, we're continually like back and forth and back and forth on that pendulum on the subject of being not too much, which is sometimes how I feel. I have learned to do something I call close the loop. So it's like, let's say that I thought I was too much for you after this interview is over, right? Like, oh, I, I said too much, right? And I was too whatever. Then what I can do to nip that worry in the bud yeah. is I can go to you and just go, I, I'm just struggling. Was I too much? I can just ask you. Yeah. Right. And too often we think we're terrified to ask because what if you say, yeah, you really were right. We're, we're like, Oh, what if I can't handle that? But I think it, I'd rather handle asking that question, yeah. which in my experience is I would say 95 to 98% of the time when I have sat worried that my email was too much or my text was too much or what I said was too much. And I go back and ask, I'm telling you 95 to 98% of the time, the people do not feel yeah. that way at all. Yeah. So that principle, that closing of that loop, not leaving it open in my head to lose sleep over has been hugely helpful to me in not walking in worry. Yeah. I still feel the worry all the time, but I, I close the distance on how long it's gonna trouble me. Wise, very wise. I like that, close the loop. I would love to just talk through one other example of how else you could close the loop, like not under that context, but in a, in a different type of relationship. Relationships are very important to us. We just have such a passion toward that. I think we give another piece of advice of what else does that look like? What other type of scenarios would you um, want to give an example of? You know, I think on the other side of that, I think the other side of that is when someone actually has hurt us yeah you know and we were talking about this a little earlier today this idea of being codependent independent and anti-dependent which i had never heard of before until yeah. i had a man who's a counselor not he wasn't mine but he knew me and he told me i was anti-dependent so in that scenario it's like you do something that hurts me or that i disagree with and i just you know what you're dead to me, right? I, I like cut off that relationship. Yeah. So the other way to close that loop would be, you know what? I care about this relationship, 
So I'm going to come to you yeah. and I'm going to tell you. And even though that might be awkward and even though you might get mad at me if I say it or maybe I'm wrong or whatever, I'm going to come to you and say, hey, when you did that thing, yeah. that really hurt me. And I just wanted to be honest and tell you that's a super loving thing to do. Yeah. We don't do that enough. We yeah. just a lot of times what, what is it called? Ghosting now that yeah. <laughs> people call it. You just like you're dead to me. I'm cutting you off. Yeah. I don't need you anyway. Yeah. And the fact is that we do need people in our lives, yeah. even if they hurt us. It's There's a value in going back, yeah. closing that loop, because really good. you may have even, either you might have known that you hurt me, but you're afraid to ask, yeah. maybe, or you didn't know, and maybe you're doing that kind of stuff to others, and yeah. no one's ever lovingly told you. Mm. Now, I'm making you sound terrible. You're not. <laughs> I'm using you as an example, I know. but it really is, it's really two-sided. We have to be willing, I think, to be both sides of that equation. Yeah. So I'll give an example. Um, I had a friend come and stay at my home and the next morning I, I said, how did you sleep? She's like, oh, great. We went through the whole day and then all of a sudden we, you know, we had spent the whole day together and then all of a sudden she's like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you're leaving? And she was, you know, super gracious, thankful, big hugs. She left. And then the next morning I say, I, or later that night, I check on her. I want to make sure you got home. And the next morning, um, we, she said, I lied to you. Mm. I am so sorry. I want to apologize. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep great. Mm -hmm. The vase fell over in the bathroom. I could hear the train in the background. I wasn't sleeping. I w really was struggling and I didn't get a wink of sleep. Mm. And so she said, first of all, I lied to you and I'm asking for your forgiveness. And we started having this amazing conversation. Mm. Yeah. All of a sudden we had an hour conversation. It was like a next level conversation mm -hmm. because we had a difficult conversation. Right. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, I yeah. didn't even know that it could be like that. All of a sudden we were sharing things and saying, here's the reason why I, I did that. And here's how we want to move forward and being friends and all of this difference. It was, it was like this beautiful example of mm -hmm. when you have the deeper conversation, you have a deeper relationship. Yes. And instead, the you're dead to me, you know, <laughs> right. statement like forget you could have happened. Right. But I felt hurt and I definitely wanted to find out. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. And so she wanted to apologize and we came into this right relationship. We're mm -hmm. both Christians. You know, we didn't want to say, you know, forget it. Yeah. We came together and had such a beautiful conversation around it. And so I just always encourage people to have those conversations mm -hmm. because you never know what level of relationship, you know, there's levels of relationships. Mm -hmm. You take it to the next level. Yeah. Super cool. And it's so dumb anyway, right? That, that something as simple as her feeling like she couldn't get sleep. Yeah. And you know, on a, on a spiritual level, you look at that and you can't help but see that was a trick, you know, to try and come between yeah, something great point. that God was in, yeah. which is relationship. And this is what I see with women all the time in various areas of ministry that I get to be involved in is the way that these, these lies and these ideas in our minds about us having to hide and step yeah. away and we can't yeah. be honest. And we're really not trusting or loving people well, right. if we can't be honest about the little stuff. There's a great um, concept in front of mine, John Lynch and some guys wrote a book called True Faced, one of my very favorite books ever. And in there it says, if we're always wearing a mask, mm. then only the mask gets the love. Mm. But it's when those cracks happen, so she let you see a crack in there, right? That then that true self gets loved. And yeah. so if we're always just trying to project what's good on the outside, then we'll be afraid to show the inside because we think everybody only loves the outside and oh no, what if they see the inside? But to your point, once you got to see inside, you guys got to go so much deeper. Yeah, and I love her more. Exactly. This is what women need to remember because the truth is we need each other. Yeah. And I want to be vulnerable. Yeah. I want to tell you as my friend, I'm really struggling with this. Mm -hmm. This is really hard for me, you know? And 
I want to go back to the boundaries anti-dependent topic. <laughs> I want to kind of dig in there a little okay. bit yeah. because that, my guess, uh, would be that anti-dependence happened be all the way back to the beginning of our conversation. Yes. Abandonment. Yes. I don't want to love you. I don't want to have a deep relationship with you because if I do, you might hurt me. Totally. Yeah. That's totally what that is. And what's interesting about it, you know, there are, there's a lot of codependent people. I haven't seen the science on it to know, are there more uh, tendency to codependent or anti-dependent? Yeah. Um, independent is the goal. Like I want to know you and I want to yeah. care about what you think about me. I don't want to be bound by it. Yeah. But I also don't want to be like, yeah, I don't need you. And I, that anti-dependent thing, I suspect that with today, with social media, with this cancel culture, it, that's almost another way of saying some of what's going on. It's yeah. like, if you say or do something that offends me or that triggers me in any way, then I'm just, you know, I'm going to bail on you and you're gone. Yeah. And I just see the divisiveness that's occurring across our churches, yeah. across just, you know, I've got children seeing in their own social structures. And this again is pulling apart the fabric of community and people are more and more isolated yeah. when really we cannot thrive that way. Yeah. The truth is we do have to have people in our lives both to nourish us and to rub those rough edges so that the That's Lord good. can just be um, working within us to make us more like yeah. him. Iron sharpens iron, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have anybody around you, how are you going to become sharper, yes. right? Here at Women of Faith, one of our core values is real relationships. And throughout our conversation, Constance continually points out ways to experience real relationships. Here's what I know. Life is better together. So may I encourage you, real relationships can be difficult. Sometimes when they are difficult, redeeming those relationships to an honest, open, fulfilling relationship, it's so rewarding. Don't give up too easily on others. You never know all they're dealing with or what they are going through. Do you want to experience a deeper relationship with Jesus? Join me for inspiring conversations that will equip you to walk more fully in God's purpose for your life. On my show, you'll meet a wide range of guests who are impacting the kingdom in meaningful ways every day. Check out the latest episodes only on Liftable. And now to your second book. <laughs> I want to talk about this book just a little bit. Tell me how you came to decide to create this book and tell me about the topic. Yes. Yeah. So I was working in the music industry right before I did that book. And I was struck by knowing that I had these issues of performance, which is really easy to fall into, even in a setting like this, right? Like you and I both work in media. And yeah. so this idea of feeling like I was what I do, right? And um, feeling convicted about that, you know, You've probably heard the saying, we're not human doings, we're human beings, but what does that really mean? So at that time, I had reached out to different recording artists that I either knew or had some six degrees of connection to and did that book. But ever since that time, that concept has really been yeah. one that means a lot to me. It's, it's the idea that if I depend on what I do or what I look like um, to be what gives me value, then I'm always bound by that. Yeah. And being able to truly be and become the fullness of who God made me to be and to try to allow myself to walk in that, even when sometimes people might not um, validate that the way I wish mm -hmm. they would. Yeah. Who validates who Constance Rhodes is? Well, I would say... First of all, the easy Christian answer is, well, God does. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, ultimately, what he, who I am in God's eyes has to be the most important thing to me. Uh, additionally, you know, even before there was the fall in the Garden of Eden, God creates Adam, and Adam and God are like walking around all the time together. But God says, it is not good for him to be alone. Yeah. So everything's perfect, and... 
he needs still something else. Mm. So I believe that the community that I'm in, for me, that includes my husband, who's actually pretty amazing to put up with me almost 29 years now. And, um, and I would say him more than my kids because your kids, I don't know what your experience is, they give me very little <laughs> in that department of validation. So I'm, not, I'm definitely not looking for it there. Uh, people that I am in work relationships with where I can be who I am, do what I do, and listen to their feedback, not hang my hat on it. But in healthy relationships and friendships, I believe that God uses those to help hold mirrors to us mm. as well. And that's an important thing. There is an idea a lot of times among Christians that all we need is get alone in a closet with God to solve all the problems. But I will always go back to the Garden of Eden For sure. and say, Yes, and God created us to walk in relationship. And it's in those relationships, the ones that are honest, yeah. which is my job to bring that to that relationship. And then to hear that feedback, to be part of giving that feedback to others, but ultimately to look for the final word in who God says that I am. Yeah. So it's kind of a conglomeration, all those yeah. things. Yeah. Well, and it really goes back to priorities, right? Like God is number one, your husband is number two, and then it's like everybody after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you can't really have that many, right? We, we can't, we can't actually manage a huge number of those meaningful relationships. So it's, it's kind of concentric circles. Yep. And you know, the people on these outer circles, we yep. can't live to please those, you know, and it's really making sure, do I have enough people in my life who can know these different aspects of who I am and who I trust right. uh, to speak feedback into my life? And typically, the most inner circle people of your life, it's you know three to five people. Yes. It really is. Right. right. Who know you and you know them. Right. Yeah, that's good. What would be something that people may not know about you? I think something that surprises people is that I am more of an introvert than an extrovert. Because mm. I do a lot of outward things, but yeah. I recharge alone. So what's your definition of introvert? Because I think the world in kind of gets it wrong, right? Well, then I might give you the wrong answer. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see how My we compare. My answer is that I recharge by being alone. Yeah. So uh, there, I can do the extrovert thing. And there, yeah. I am a partial extrovert, but I would, during COVID, when a lot of people were like going out of their minds because they couldn't get together with people. Yeah. I was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, mm. but you know, just, yeah. So I agree. A lot of times people think they don't, a lot of people want to define introversion as being shy, as mm. not liking other people, or they right. have no influence over other people. Yeah. A lot of different things of what introversion means. An introvert is what you said. An introvert is you recharge by being alone. Yeah. You gain your energy back by being alone. Yeah. When you're with people, that energy level actually is drained. Mm -hmm. Extroverts are opposite. It's mm -hmm. not that introvert, I'm an introvert for sure. I love to be by myself because I recharge. That is how I prepare to be with other people. Exactly. Right? And I need that time to regain my energy extroverts gain energy by being with people. Right. So um, a lot of people who are communicators are introverts because they need the time by themselves mm -hmm. to figure out what they're going to say to others. Yes, to so, fuel up. Yeah, so I, and I also feel like, and maybe this is just me, sometimes I feel like people think it's a bad thing if you're an introvert or mm -hmm. it's, it's not as good as or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's my own issue that I need to work through. Yeah. But um, I'm like, Wow, I love, I love regaining my energy by myself and with Jesus. I, I yeah. feel like I spend so much more time with Jesus because of that. Yes. So I feel like it's actually a gift for me. Yes. Yeah, it's good. All right, girl. Time for Constance Rhodes' Truth Bomb. Oh. <laughs> what is your takeaway that you would want people to hear from you um, that, they would, that they would remember that you said today? Yeah. I'll go to a scripture, Proverbs 29, 25. Um, in the message translation, which I know not everyone loves message, but in the message translation, it says the fear of human opinion disables, mm. but trusting in God protects you from that. And so for me, that word disables after 
I had a mom who, you know, was paralyzed. That was a very obvious disability to, for me to observe that. And I just think about that word and really what it means for us when we feel so crippled by our fear of what humans think of us. And it's not that we shouldn't care. We've talked a little about let's go back and see, you know, how we come across. But I cannot put my trust in a human opinion. Mm. Keeping my trust in God ultimately is what will protect me from being crippled that way. Wow, that is so wise. I feel like now we can start the show all back over and we're, we could talk about that topic. Okay. So good. So good. What would be one last piece of advice that you might give our viewers today? You know, I love for women in particular, this is true for men too, but my heart for women, we were given a unique voice for a reason. And I think we live in a culture where we have been told what our voice should sound like. And our voice, I'm including even appearance is part of our voice and what we do is part of our voice and what we stand for is part of our voice. But so often I see women self-silencing, being afraid to have some of those difficult conversations like we talked about earlier. And our voices either become homogenized all into just parroting the same message or the same voice that we hear around us or just quiet and silent and the fact is that even just the human voice on a scientific level is so unique yours has such different characteristics than mine has different than somebody else like god was so intentional in how he created us and our voice and so remembering that every voice matters it doesn't matter if you have a show or if you have a big job or if you're just staying at home or if you're single or if you're married, like these things don't matter. Every single person's voice matters. Mm -hmm. So I'm very passionate about that. That's literally the name of like the coaching I do is true voice because there's something really powerful when we choose to overcome that natural fear of man and trust God and then say, all right, Lord, use my voice the way that you want to. I love it. How could people connect with you if they want to get coaching or yeah. find out more about you? Yeah, so truevoice.co, there's no M, uh, is my coaching site. And then I'm, I'm writing some stuff and doing some other things too. But I guess that would be the main thing is truevoice.co. Love it. Yeah. I'm cheering you wildly. Thank you. <laughs> I am such a... Um, fan of yours. I think you're doing amazing work. So I'm so thankful. We got to have first of many, I believe, many yeah. shows <laughs> together. Thanks for being here. Bye. This show was brought to you in part by Faithfully Fit and Free, ICCI, and OneShare. To learn more, go to womenoffaith.com.